Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Bill Bailey. And I'm Sally. From Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida. Thanks for joining us today. We're believing God that your life is gonna be changed for the better because of our program today. And really it's not because of us, but it's because of the power of the gospel, the message that we preach, that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus baptizes in the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is coming again. That's the gospel message that we preach here every Sunday and Wednesday at Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida. I'd love to connect with you on social media. We're on all of the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can also get our live services live streamed on social media. Happygospelchurch.com is our website address, and I'd love to pray with you. There's a link at the bottom of the screen that you can go to and send me any prayer requests. I monitor that email personally and would love the pleasure and the privilege of praying for you. Well, I've got a free offer for you this week. Our good friends, the Guardians, they're one of gospel music's Amen, top are. quartets. And I'd love to send you a free CD, just as my way of thanking you for watching today's program. My announcer's coming in just a moment to give you the details of how you can do that, but I'll send it to your mailbox, postage paid and absolutely free of charge, just to connect the dots and to thank you for watching today's program. Here's the announcer and then get ready for some great gospel music and a powerful message from God's Word. Pastor Bill Bailey would like to send you a free CD from one of his favorite quartets, The Guardians, a way of saying thank you for watching. To receive your free postage paid CD, go to happygospelchurch.com slash TV offer and request offer number 0421 CD. Thank you for watching. I found my deliverance at an altar of prayer. I knelt down and left all my burdens there. His blood washed me white as snow. I wish I could tell you. I came up shouting with a new desire. From my head to my toes, I felt holy fire. It was joy unspeakable. Oh, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you all about God's glory. I wish I could tell you, but you gotta live the story of power and love, His mercy and grace. I'll tell you how the Savior died to take my place, but I can't explain it. I can't describe it. Lord knows I can't deny it. But I know that every word is true, and I wish I could tell you. times in my life when I needed a friend. He's walked right beside me to the very end. He's closer than a brother. Oh, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you. When the valley got low and the mountain got high, he gave me a reason to testify. I can't live without him. Oh, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you all about God's glory. I wish I could tell you, but you gotta live the story of power and love, His mercy and grace. I'll tell you how the Savior died to take my place, but I can't explain it. I can't describe it. Lord knows I can't deny it. But I know that every word is true, and I wish I could tell you. than a brother, he's more than kin, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, there's no one like Whoa. him, oh I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you, Savior, Deliverer, Redeemer and Friend, there is none above him, and there's never been, I can't live without Whoa. him, oh I wish I could tell you.
when you get touched by the Spirit of God, you cannot deny it. When you come to the Holy Spirit, when you ask God to baptize you in the Holy Ghost, there's a change that will take place upon you. A release and a freedom. That's what we experience some today in worship as Rainey began to step out and the singers began to step out and the presence of God, it became a looseness. It, it, it became broke free. So, some of you were, were spectating, but there were others that said, I don't care, I want to participate. And then I got so blessed myself personally. Tears began to flow down when I looked at little Isaac Spiker come running down the aisle. He didn't know what to do but just to get right in the middle of them and just to jump and praise God. Could I tell you, that not ought to be something that happens every now and then. That ought to be a regular experience of our young people and old people praising God. Somebody holler hallelujah. Well, Pastor Bailey, I'm not as young as they are. Well, do what you can. Move your big toe. Start with the two-step. I wish I could dance like some of my brothers and sisters can, but I can't move my feet just right. There's too much South Georgia redneck in me. I can't get it just right, but I'm going to do my part. I'm not going to let somebody at least out-energize me. I'm going to give it everything i got. I may not have as much as you do, but I'm still going to praise him with everything I've got in me because he's been too good to be and to my family. Come on, somebody. When you come for the Holy Ghost, you come rejoicing. You come asking him for a blessing. Oh, Lord, bless me. The Bible says out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. They said in Acts 19, we've not even heard so much of the Holy Ghost. We've not even heard about it. We don't have enough messages preached on the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit. But it is for every believer what are the requirements again? Number one, that you be saved. Number two, that you have a hunger and a desire because the Holy Spirit is a gift. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a gift for the believer. It's a gift for every believer, but there must be a desire. There must be a want to. I don't know about you, but I would hate to come to church and not want everything that God has for me in my life. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. I, I want it all. Sally and I went on a cruise last year right before the pandemic hit. And while we were on the cruise, I wanted to find out how many times I could actually eat in one day. Yes. They said you can eat as much as you want. Well, I wanted to know every place. How long was the burger bar open? How long was the pizza bar open? How long was the ice cream machine working? Come on, somebody. I mean, if, if my fare included all of it, I wanted to use it all. John Owen's over here saying, amen. I wanted to take advantage of every amenity that I had paid for. When they said it includes, I wanted to make sure it actually included it. I didn't want anything left behind. And can I tell you, some of you are going to go to heaven and not have experienced everything that God had for you on this side of eternity. Can I tell you, there is more than just fire insurance when it comes to being saved. God wants you to know Him intimately and to be empowered and enabled and equipped by the Holy Spirit to live an abundant, victorious life until Jesus comes or until you meet Him. Can you say amen? And so the second requirement is simply a hunger, a desire to be filled. I used to preach it that you had to be holy to be filled. And then the Lord just rattled my cage one night. We were having a service just like we're having today, preaching on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. People were coming down wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There was a man that came down. I knew enough about his testimony to know that he smoked cigarettes. 
And I was like, well, this man can't be filled with the Holy Ghost. He's got to get rid of those cigarettes first. That was my mentality. I had some religious stinking thinking. I thought he had a problem. His problem. Now listen, don't, don't, don't get off on folks that struggle with nicotine. Some of the rest of us struggle with Mountain Dew and sweet tea and fried chicken, okay? Not mean to point a finger, just using that as an analogy. But I thought, God, he needs to get rid of those cigarettes first before you'd fill him with the Holy Ghost. The Lord spoke to me just as clear as my son-in-law would speak to me. And God spoke to me on the front row. He said, I'll baptize and fill people with the Holy Ghost without your permission. And then the Lord told me something else I've always remembered. He said, he needs the Holy Ghost as much as anyone else in here. He needs my power as much as anyone else in here. Cigarettes and all. And I realized at that moment that God is drawn to our weakness. We think that people in, in the natural, they are drawn to our strength, so we look our best. I mean, this morning, I'm telling I put my clothes on. I felt good about the way I looked. Got the right tie on. I know I look good. You don't have to tell me, but I know I look good. I I looked in the mirror and I thought, man, this is good as it's going to get for Bill Bailey. But it got a little better. Right before I walked out the door, Rowan looked at me, my oldest granddaughter. She said, Papa, you look great. You look like you're going to a wedding. I thought, you know what? I can right now just beat the dickens out of the devil. I tell you, the, the, it, it, just, it was an affirming word. But can I submit to you today, God is not drawn to your strength. He's drawn to your weakness. He's drawn to where that weak spot is. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor Bill, I would love to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'd love to have everything that God has for me. But you don't understand my weak areas, or as we would say theologically, my proclivities. You, you don't understand my vulnerabilities. And Pastor Bill, I've even acted out on my weakness here lately. I've even struggled here lately. Ain't nobody going to amen me right now. But, but Pastor, I... I, I've had issues here lately. Can I submit to you today and tell you that if you desire the Holy Spirit to empower you, to enable you, and to equip you, even with your weakness, He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost today. We've not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, that Paul asked him, well, under what baptism were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. So we baptized them again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And following that baptism, he laid hands on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Prayed over them. And the Bible said they began to speak with tongues. Now people get all messed up about tongues. But tongues is simply the initial physical evidence of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Every person that's baptized in the Holy Ghost speaks with tongues. Biblically, the book of Acts tells us every person that was baptized in the Holy Ghost, they spoke with tongues. Acts chapter 2 says, as the Spirit gave them the utterance. And so every believer that's baptized, that'll be the initial physical evidence. Now you may say, Pastor Bill, I don't understand that and I don't get that. Well, Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. It's, it's out of your belly is what the King James says, but it's out of your innermost being. It's out of your spirit will flow this language. Now we understand in Acts 2, I could go into great detail about tongues. It is a known language somewhere in the world that you, the, the, the speaker, do not actually know. But irrespective of that, it'll be a language that God gives you supernaturally when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, could I tell you, when Sally got baptized in the Holy Ghost, it scared some of her family because they were unbelievers. They didn't understand this. They thought Sally had gone crazy. They thought she was in a trance. They thought maybe she was in a cult or so forth. And I know maybe some of you have come from backgrounds to where when they heard you were going to a tongue-talking Pentecostal Holy Roller Church, they thought, doo -doo 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 -doo. they have joined a cult. 
But the natural man cannot receive the things of God because they are foolishness to them. The carnal mind is an enemy of God because it's not subject to the law of God. And so you cannot base your experience with God by what an unbeliever has to say. Let me just stop right here and rant for about 30 seconds. That's why I have trouble with believers that are worried about what late night comedians have to say about faith and about the Bible and about what they believe in God or what some political commentator has to say. I don't get my belief system based upon what Jimmy Fallon or Stephen Colbert or some late night comedian thinks about it. I don't get my faith based upon what a political commentator thinks about it. I get my faith based Based upon what God's word has to say about it. And God's word is eternal. It's forever settled in heaven. It's good preaching, Pastor Bailey. And so when you understand that, some of you I know have people that they don't get it in your family and your loved ones because they are not a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I encourage you, everything that you do and practice and believe, Base it upon God's word because at the end of the day, Pastor Bailey may not be here. At the end of the day, you may be somewhere else around a different group of people. But God's word is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God is eternal and it will last forever. Can you say amen? Give God a good praise right there, will you? The scripture says they had not even heard of the Holy Ghost. And so he began to walk them through the process. And they received the Holy Ghost. That night I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Could I tell you? It changed everything about me in regards to the, my relationship with God. As life changing as salvation is for the unbeliever. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is just as life changing for the believer. Now. You do not have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost in order to be saved. I get asked this a lot. You don't have to speak in tongues in order to go to heaven. This is not a heaven or hell or saved or not saved issue. But if you are going to live a victorious overcoming life, you need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I thought, I'd, let me try over here. If you are going to live an overcoming victorious life, you need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Every day, every day I need God's power in my life. Every day I need that quickening of the Holy Spirit in my life. I like what one Facebook post said. said, you don't just need the Holy Ghost in order to live or go to heaven. You need the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Have you been to Walmart? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> You need the Holy Ghost and the Pentecostal distinctive that makes us who we are is that fire that's on the inside. And I'm reminded as I get ready to close, and I'm just getting ready to close, but as I remind, I'm reminded of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. The scripture says that there's no recorded conversion in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah preached his entire ministry and more than likely, nobody came to Christ. Now, now there, there may have been, but the Bible doesn't record any conversion. Jeremiah preached a message that the people did not want to hear. And, and they would respond negatively to him, even to the point that Jeremiah just threw in the towel and said, I quit. I'm not doing it any longer. I'm not preaching this anymore. And they had kept telling him to shut up so much. He said, I'm, I'm just going to shut up. But about the time he quit, there was something on the inside of him that was still there. Someone asked me one day, they said, uh, Jamar, they said, uh, Pastor Bill, how many times have you ever wanted to quit? I looked at him and I said, <laughs> you don't want to know how many times I've said I quit. I've quit more times than you want to hear about in 31 years. 
But could I tell you, every time I said, God, I'm quitting, I'm done, there was something on the inside of me that reminded me of my call and something on the inside of me that reminded me that I'm not my own. I was bought with a price. And there's been a price that's been paid for me. And I've been empowered and enabled. And can I tell you, he'll be just like Jeremiah. He said, I can't quit because there's fire shut up in my bones. There's a fire, and that's the fire of Pentecost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire that'll cause you to resurrect when you feel like just laying down and dying. It's the fire that'll cause you to pick up the towel and start all over again and not quit. Is there anybody that says, I've been touched by the fire of God, and I'll never be the same again? Oh, I feel him. Feel him in my hands. Feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. It's that fire that will make a change and a difference in every believer. It's that quickening power that's on the inside of you. That says, Mark, I'm not giving up no matter what the legal process may be. That God, you're still on the throne. You're still able to make a way where there seems to be no way. You are a miracle working God. I'm trusting you, Jesus, to do what only you can do. Somebody holler hallelujah. It's what makes the difference. It's what sets us apart. I'm going to be a little personal here for a moment. You may not like it, but that's all right. I'll be back next Sunday. That's why I refuse to throw in the towel to this Pentecostal message. People come and they say, what's that secret? What, what is it that you, what, what, why do you do what you do? What is it about? Can I tell you, it's that Pentecostal message. It's that spirit-filled message. It's that where I was baptized in the Holy Ghost from. Loudmouth Lynn DeCipio, when he laid his hands on me and said, receive the Holy Ghost, there was an impartation. I'll never be the same again. I'm a square peg. I don't fit into a round hole. And if you've ever been touched by the Spirit of God, you'll feel the same exact way. I pray today's service has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. That's why we come each and every week here to pray and to minister to you. And if there's a way that we could do so more specifically, why don't you send me an email? Let me know you're watching, where you're watching from, your prayer request, and also a testimony of how this broadcast is a blessing to you. The link is at the bottom of the screen. You can also follow us on all of the social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, we're on all of them and we even live stream our Sunday morning services as well so you can literally join us for Sunday morning church from anywhere around the world. Don't forget to request your free CD this week of our special musical guests, The Guardians. They're one of gospel music's top quartets, one of mine and Sister Bailey's favorites. We love Dean Hickman and all the guys, and I know you will too. If you'll go to happygospelchurch.com slash TV offer, fill out the form, and we'll get it to you in the next few days. It's absolutely free with no strings attached. Our way of saying thank you for watching the telecast and to help us begin a new friendship. Well, I'm Pastor Bill Bailey from Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you this same time next week. How great the
Oh, we'll see how great. 